welcome Father Kizito, welcome Father Opio in this uh, workshop, Robo, uh, Professor Kizito, in this workshop, Robo Ethics. The question I start with you, Father Kizito. Then you have said that you have mentioned three words, keywords, I think, while we are still struggling in Africa after 50 years of independence, most of the countries in Africa, and Africa still continues or goes backwards. The question is that uh, participation, sustainability, and affordability. What does that mean for Africa? You have spoken there uh, in general, but for Africa, our reality, for this technology. I would like to begin by saying more than heavy industry, there is a real big opportunity for Africa to make a mark. We don't have the reserves of iron ore and all these minerals that we can use. We do have them under the ground. But rather than wait until we, we proceed from making the machines and reinventing the wheel, with robotics we can come straight in and make a contribution. What has happened so far, and I think Professor Opio will be better at this than me, what has happened is that we do have pockets of progress in Africa. He, he mentioned uh, Rwanda, he mentioned uh, Ethiopia, Ethiopia as well. So you do have small pockets where people are doing real research and making a mark. Now, coming to my view, mm -hmm. um, those pockets must stop being pockets. They must stop taking the children of the rich and the famous. They must stop the divide between the rich and the poor. Let us make robotics something that everyone can access, can afford. Because all it takes really is learning how to code. And for that, we just need to have uh, computers. So. Let's give computers to all, as many as possible. Let's teach them coding, the way we teach them the alphabet in kindergarten onwards, and then we shall make innovators out of them. Father Kizit has said here, education is a key word, but there are so many people learned in Africa, but who are escaping from Africa. How can we have these brands which are escaping from Africa, to be in Africa, develop in Africa, most of the people who are developing Europe, uh, United States, are from Africa. How can you say, how, how can, can you read this movement here? And how the technology can change? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'd like to say one thing um, about this claim of brain brain from Africa. Uh, it is true, but it's also false. It is true, quite a number of Africans go out of Africa. Why do they go out of Africa? That is a big question. It's not because they want to run out of Africa. They're going out of Africa, especially the professionals, because the context within which they find themselves operating in Africa does not allow them fully to harness and use their potentials. So uh, this is something that I think uh, uh, needs to be, um, to be put in, in proper perspective. Of course it is a gain to the rest of the world, but I would also like to look at it as a gain to Africa. If African professionals, African pro uh, scholars, are taken as the equal best and competitive out there, there is a big gain for Africa because Africa must stand out and be counted out of Africa. Now, the other question, that's where I think the whole issue of um, creating fertile ground for these Africans to be back would be uh -huh. critical. Uh -huh. yeah. Most of us, I, I think, my own case, I, I think I've spent more time out of Africa. Oh. And uh, I, I, I've considered this time outside Africa 
as an opportunity for me to sharpen my own skills and competencies, to widen my horizon. And now back in Africa, uh, I find myself actually quite, quite well placed uh, to be able to make a contribution.